Welcome back to Most Amazing Facts. Today we're looking at Ask Reddit, how do you socialize at a party where you only know the host and you're not too social? One time when this happened to me, I just found a mid-sized group of people having a conversation about general stuff and kind of hung out at the edges listening. Like, the group was big enough and they weren't talking about in-group stuff, so that me just kind of sidling up wasn't distracting. I waited until the conversation reached a point where I had something meaningful to add to the conversation, and I spoke up. Then I was in, and things just kind of continued from there with me speaking more. I didn't just barge in and hijack the conversation. I was listening long enough to get a feel for the conversation and knew what had been under discussion while also just being present so that I wasn't automatically an outsider once I did. People had time to see me and that I was part of the group, even if I was just a spectator at first. I couldn't tell you any of their names, but I remember having a good time hanging out with them. This is the best advice. Just wander around and listen to conversations that are happening until you find one that you might be able to contribute to and just speak up. Humans are social creatures. Most people at a party are going to be inclusive and will welcome people who are trying to integrate. Hang out by the kitchen. People will pass through for chit chat and leave again to deliver the drinks to their friends. Nobody has to be super awkward avoiding chat, but those who are interested will end up staying and before you know it, kitchen party. Kitchen party is always the best party. The best people eventually end up there. My shy self is usually wherever the host is, and I'm like a counterpuncher. Won't really say anything unless they start talking to me. It's like looking into a mirror. Get there a little early when people are just starting to show up and the host isn't super busy yet. If there's just a small group talking with the host, it would seem natural for the host to introduce you to them. Alternatively, when you get there and greet said host, there's no shame in saying, I don't know anyone else here. Will you introduce me to someone? Oh, the idea with asking the host to introduce you is good. I never thought about that. The host will probably also have an idea with which person slash group you'll get along the best. Or you can walk up to the biggest guy in the party and punch him in the face. Although a good host will do introductions without you asking, but it doesn't hurt to remind them. Look around and find someone who is also alone in the corner. At least you have something in common to say like, dude, help me, I don't know anyone at this party. Someone walks near the corner of the room. Hey, you don't know anyone either, huh? I went to a party of around 20 people and they all knew one another except me and this other girl. We only know the host. We sat next to each other and we began small talking. Next thing I know, we're sharing our live stories, laughing and having a good time. The people at the party assumed we were best friends. I never got to see her again, but I'll never forget her. Yeah, pick the other socially awkward person to talk to. Conversations will fly. Hey, what's up? Hey, you know Pac-Man? You know the original name for Pac-Man was Puck-Man. Not because he looks like a hockey puck, but it's Paku Paku, which means flap your mouth. But they thought people would scratch out the P and turn it into an F like Ooh. man Scott learned the power of self-respect. You know what PAC stands for? P-A-C. Program and control. He's program and control man. The whole thing's a metaphor. All he can do is consume. He's pursued by demons that are probably just in his own head. And even if he does manage to escape by slipping out one side of the maze, what happens? He comes right back in the other side. People think it's a happy game. It's not a happy game. It's a nightmare world. And the worst thing is, it's real. And we live in it. You could walk up to someone that is not busy or in a deep conversation, introduce yourself, ask them their name, and how they know the host. Then say something nice about how you know the host. Then ask them what is keeping them busy lately. Usually an interesting conversation follows. If not, just say nice meeting you and maybe move on to the next person. You may think you need courage or social skills first, but in reality, just doing it anyway will give you the courage you felt you lacked and the social skills will follow. The bar or drinks area is perfect for this. Use the drinks as an icebreaker to kick off a tiny bit of small talk, then segue into, I'm X, what's your name? So how do you know host? I have a tendency to pretend I'm someone more confident. I'll walk up to strangers and compliment something about them. Oh my God, your shoes are so cute. Where did you get them? People love compliments that are sincere and love talking about themselves. It'll get the ball rolling. Faking confidence is pretty much the same as being confident. Step one, get drunk. Step two, get drunker. Step three, introduce yourself like the legend you are. Casually ask guests how they know the host and use that as a starting point for a conversation. Oh, you work together. In the same role? How long have you been working there? What do you like about it? If it seems like they don't like their job or don't want to talk about work, turn it into asking them about their hobbies. Oh, you went to school together. What did you study? Were you roommates? If they went to college far away, ask how they ended up in your city. From there, you might learn where they grew up and that can turn into another conversation. Oh, your dogs go to the same groomer? Tell me about your pets. Can I see pictures? Oh, you were incarcerated together. What were you in for? People like to talk about themselves, usually. 
Ask about non-controversial things like their pets, kids, jobs, most recent Netflix binge, most recent movie they saw in theaters, a recent vacation, or something similar. You can also try compliments, but don't overdo it. Make sure it's genuine. I really like your handbag or necklace, watch, etc. Where did you get it? Sometimes that will open a conversation. If all else fails, find the dog or cat in the house and make friends. Other introverts will find them too, and you can all sit quietly doting on the pets until it's time to go home. But best with questions that have long answers. Were you roommates? Yes. Versus, what was he like in college? Oh, he was wild, blah, blah, blah. Find the cat. Finding the cat is better than finding the dog because A, you'll have a hard time finding the cat, and B, it won't be in the same room as all the people, and C, it will eventually leave you and you get to find it all over again, therefore being entertained the whole time. Last time I found the cat, I was already really drunk and just wanted to pet something soft, so I was basically lying on the floor with the cat. Next thing I know, I woke up to someone flipping me over to check if I was breathing. I look over to see the cat eating my vomit. Apparently, I passed out in a pool of my own vomit while playing with the cat. Say to everyone, I have free cocaine. Turns out you don't. Everyone hated that. Pet the dog the whole party. Or wear a dog suit and get touched inappropriately by all the introverts. Get drunk enough that the cops are called. The cops will need to talk to you. That's how you get someone to at least talk to you. You drink until everyone looks friendly. All these people saying that drinking is the answer? I'm not gonna lie, that's what I've been doing for 15 years now, and it works if you use it in moderation, but it's very hard to unlearn this habit of drinking to be social. It's a very difficult drug to handle, so I don't recommend it. Once you start feeling the peak, you've probably already had too much because it takes a while to kick in fully, and once you've already had a little too much, the first thing to go is probably the regulation, so more alcohol will seem like an excellent idea, and it's very easy to overdose and make a fool of yourself. If you can learn how to socialize without it, you'll have a great advantage in life. So it's better instead to wait a bit. If you are going to drink, wait at least for one to three hours into the party so that you've had time to meet everyone, chat, and get more comfortable in your natural state. In my case, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Then you can enhance the evening with a couple of drinks. And now over to the advice part of the comment. While getting ready, use the time to prepare answers to commonly asked questions. Make up some jokes or funny anecdotes around where you work, slash what you study, your interests, any travels you've done, what your plans and dreams are for the future. Plan how to spin sad topics to your advantage. No, I'm unemployed at the moment, which gives me a lot of time to cry in the shower. <laughs> but also work on home projects such as planning a garden. Then ask what they do or enjoy doing if they haven't already said. Or carry on with a little anecdote around home projects. Request tips around gardening or home projects or change the topic. Prepare questions and topics of interest so you feel ready to meet people. Make sure you ask questions as well as you answer them. And don't shy away from more interesting topics than the weather. I like philosophical and religious topics such as what do you believe happens when we die or why, as long as you ask them with the intent to understand someone else, not to get your own point across. Good luck. Bring face paint and a bottle of something interesting to share, usually a great icebreaker. Helps if you know how to face paint, but it's funnier if you don't. Find the books. Look at them. If they have no books, leave. For conversation ideas, ask something regarding Ford. F, family. O, occupation. R, recreation. D, dreams or aspirations. Everyone has these topics in common, so there will always be something to talk about. Remember to never bring up rape, at least in first encounters. Religion, abortion, politics, economics, or money. A good host will set up games like cornhole or beer pong or something so that people can break the ice that way. Otherwise, walking up to a group that's talking and standing awkwardly until you can either jump into the conversation or walk away and try to find another group. Eventually, you might luck out and walk into one that introduces themselves to you and lets you join them. I found this step-by-step -step guide works. One, walk up to someone that isn't threatening. I'm a dude, so I'll usually walk up to other dudes rather than women dudettes and start with, Hi, how do you know the host? Step two is tricky. You have to listen to the answer. I found the best method is to pick up on something they say as the answer and follow up. Oh, I work with Kenny at the library. Follow up? You work at the library. What do you do? Oh, I know Kenny. We grew up together. Follow up? You grew up together. Where'd you grow up? Oh, I know Kenny. We play sport name together. Follow up? How long have you been playing sport name? A lot of small talk is literally listening to what the person said and just asking to know more about what they said. For example, maybe their kids are friends. You might have kids. You might be an aunt or an uncle to kids. You can chime in with some funny story about kids you know from a coworker. Maybe you could just ask them about their kids. How old are they? Boys or girls? Also a great question I use every time is, so going on any vacations this summer? Most people are doing something in summer. If they are a drip and have nothing planned, maybe you can chime in with what you are going to do or where you visited recently. I was just in Toronto. I loved it. Have you ever been? 
Honestly, I used to be terrible at small talk until I learned to just listen to what they were saying and keep asking questions and chime in about myself if they stumble upon a subject that I know. Football, golf, history, travel, computer games, whatever. It takes some practice. Good luck. I usually leave when no one is looking. And that's the end of this Ask Reddit. How do you socialize at a party where you only know the host and you're not too social? What are your key select tips for socializing at a party? Are you somebody who's great at making small talk? Let us know down in the comments. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, get subscribed to Most Amazing Facts, and share this video with your friends so that they can know how to socialize or contribute with theirs. Anyways, thank you for watching this Most Amazing Facts video, and we'll see you in the next one.